Hey, what's up everybody? Jeff Hargrove back again. And today I'm gonna be breaking down a heroic um, epic orchestral cue with some epic drums. Uh, it's called Victorious and you guys know how we do it. We'll take a listen to it. Then we'll talk about it on a flip. All right, let's get to it. So there it is. Um, again, it's called Victorious. Um, you know, pretty uh, epic, you know, as I said. Um, so let's kind of, um, you know, get into it a little bit and, and kind of talk about it. Um, so, um, you know, basics, it's in C minor, modulates to C sharp minor, and it's at 125 beats per minute. Um, so as you guys heard, I mean, the intro, I'm immediately stating the theme with French horns. Um, and it, as you know, is one of the most used instruments for heroic themes. Uh, of course, uh, you know, you think Thor Dark World with, with Brian Tyler, and then you think one of my favorites, Captain Marvel um, with Pinar Toprik, um, the way those horns come in. Mm -hmm. Of course, I can't sing, but anyway, you guys get the point. Um, that uh, those, those horns uh, really just kind of come in and, and set the tone uh, for that um, heroic theme. So I was trying to um, accomplish the the same thing. So um, let's kind of get inside the cue a little bit. Um, so I am using um, to start. I, I have uh, a couple of horns paired here. So I have the legato horn from Cinebrass, which, of course, is just a beautiful sounding solo horn. And then what I do is I pair that with the four horns um, from BBC, and I'm using the Cuivre um, articulation. Uh, open that up for you. Uh, oops, that's the center brass. Let's open up the um, the BBC. Uh, and Quivre is like a, like overblown or brassy, really brassy um, kind of sound. Um, so I'll play that. Of course, it'd be nice if it was solo, right? <laughs> so here we go. So those four horns sound great as well. So just to add that that little bright and brassy character. So if we put the two of those together, we have. So 
So just kind of, like I said, setting the tone. Um, and then the other thing that I do have with it, I do have a process was well, a processed piano, but not because I'm processing it. It's really just the piano by itself um, that we're using here. Is, is a piano Midnight Grand. Uh, you guys may, I, I think it's Fractured Sounds um, that has this piano. Sounds great, y'all. I love this piano. Hear that? Oh my gosh. It, it just has so much uh, going on uh, with it, and it's all inside of the um the patch itself um it's just you know me manipulating uh you know what it gives us here so i'm not messing with the color or the width at all but i do have the atmosphere intensity at about 75 percent and then you see the layers they give you options for layers so i have all of the layers on and i just then i just have them at various levels to give me you know the specific sound that i'm looking for but man i, I think that midnight grand um sounds pretty awesome so we have that again along with the horns and then of course they're providing some harmonic um, content as well and then the other thing um, that you hear in the opening is an ostinato um, and this ostinato is very prominent throughout the entire cue now i utilize a synth um to to set this up and it's important as, as much as um, the t the uh, melodic tones that it's playing, the rhythm is extremely important uh, to the movement of the cue. It's a triplet rhythm, pa 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 pa, which is very. It, you'll notice that the drums emulate that rhythm. So that's the ostinato, um, and I'm using the Podolsky, which you guys know is one of my favorite sims. Uh, <laughs> and the patch that I'm using is called Whack Solo. So let's listen to that. And I mean, honestly, by itself, it does sound a little whack, right? But um, it, it really does, I, I think, accomplish what it is that I needed to accomplish um, in kind of setting up the ostinato and then supporting the ostinato. Um, and then, of course, you guys, if you don't know, ostinato is just a repeated uh, phrase, a phrase that kind of um, that happens, you know, over and over. That That's ostinato. So uh, on this, I do a pretty drastic EQ cut. Um, at about 173 hertz, as you see, I almost got a 13 dB uh, cut there. But the reason is, is that it, it has this knock in it. So I'll bypass it. So you hear that low knock. I was just trying to get that out. So now with the EQ back in. So you see, we got that low knock um, out. And then I just did a slight boost um, at around 600. Uh, hertz um, and, and that's uh, pretty much it there you guys I think heard those low strings that kind of come in uh, around at bar nine here again it's about the rhythm da -da -da -da, you know that that triplet uh, sounding rhythm and then the reason that I wanted to introduce um, the low strings here is really because I, I just wanted to set up the fact that they were going to play in a pretty important role in the development of the cue going forward and in really carrying um, the ostinato. So what I am using, as, as you will see, um, is I'm using an ensemble patch uh, for this and is some cinematic studio strings and I'm using the um, light ensemble so you have that and then I also um, have a um, finger symbol that is playing off of that so a sort of call and response I'll play them both together so <laughs> So again, just kind of setting up that very, very important rhythm. The rhythm is just important really as the melody, um, you know, in this, that bop, 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 that, that driving motor is very critical. So I'm really just trying to establish, um, you know, and support that rhythm that's kind of happening with the, um, the synth ostinato. And then the other thing that we 
have from a harmonic standpoint um, to support the piano uh, with the harmonies as well is this string, uh, high strings. And you know, I love uh, the originals, epic strings. And this is the long string CS or concertino, which is muted. And I think it just sounds great. And just kind of riding um, our express in there. Yeah, so we have that. And then if you hear it with the piano, Oh man, I, I think that, you know, just sounds awesome. And then the only other thing um, that I do have is I have this sub bass and just hanging out on the, the low C pedal tone, just hanging out. Just kind of undergirding everything um, that's going on, you know, and I'm actually using um, a patch from my Yamaha Moex synth and then the only other thing that we have is just a sub boom uh, by damage. Just at the very open. And I am using uh, for my sub boom in this regard is I'm using Trailer Made uh, to patch and I'm using the hybrid sub uh, too. Um, and you see I have it pretty far back on the stage. And it just adds a weight, just adds a little weight. So it's always nice to have those kind of low elements to give you that weight. Okay, so that is it. And then as we get um, prepped to go in to the, the A, A section, one thing that you'll notice, and actually we have a very small interlude before we get into the A section, but that's all about building tension, um, even that small interlude. So you'll notice like I play the melody as ba 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 and then I wait two full bars before bum, I resolve um, that melody uh, on the tonic, right? And then we get prepared um, to move into an interlude, a very small interlude with our ostinato kind of setting up, uh, if you will, the entire pacing uh, of uh, the cue. So let's kind of just look at getting into the interlude section, right? So we get into the interlude we have. Okay, so what we have uh, going on, and that symbol seemed a little rogue. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. That that didn't sound right, and I don't know why. Let me do that again. So that symbol sounds rogue, but <laughs> we're going to roll with it anyway. I mean, he just sounds like he is just totally out of control. But um, what you will notice uh, on, <laughs> on the interlude is now I'm introducing my low drums, right? With that same um, pattern um, in terms of rhythm, you know, that, that we, we've started to uh, kind of establish uh, throughout. So let's see. Let's go here. And we got... Right, and then we're in right. So same thing. Um, just kind of establishing the rhythm. And the only other thing is we still have the finger symbols. We now we have the low string um, ostinato. Um, I don't know if I played that for you by itself, but. So again, this is my thought is celli viola in terms of the tone of what we're hearing. And then the only thing, other thing I'm going to show you is you'll notice, um, kind of look at how I had to really work with these um, velocities, right? Um, and, and that's pretty important. Just making sure 
that in order to get those accents where I wanted it, I just really had to spend some time kind of dialing in, but it's bop, 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 you know, just getting those accents right so it really helps as opposed to it just being bop, 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 that's a lot less um, interesting. So just take the time to kind of work through, um, you know, getting your velocities uh, right and, and, and getting them where you want them. Okay, and then um, the only other thing, again, you always want transitional elements. Again, I don't know why the symbol sounds so crazy, but it is a transitional element. And of course, we have a tam-tam um, as well. And tam-tam is nothing, it's really a gong that's, that's not pitched. So we have a tam-tam uh, and the symbol's kind of getting us into, into our theme. So once we um, get into our theme, a few things change. So first thing that changes is um, with the uh, melody, right? I move from five horns to 13. And on top of that, I add a flute um, just to add a little high sparkle uh, to the melody. So if we play uh, now, uh, the who's carrying the melody when we get here. All right, uh, oh, you guys are not carrying the melody. All right, so there we go, and. So cool. So now the melody, you know, kind of opens up a little bit. We add that flute on top. It's a common orchestration technique. Um, to add like, um, you know, a flute, you know, on top of horns, lots of times on top of the violins, um, you know, carrying the melody or whatever. So um, just added a flute on top of that just to give it a little um, sparkle uh, on the, um, the top end. Um, then later on, you'll notice um, that I add back the four horns and some trumpets at the end of the phrase and i'll show you to you guys that a little later just to really build like the end of the phrase um to to, to give it even uh, some more uh, oomph if you will on the end of the phrase now as it relates to the ostinato so of course the the synth did start the ostinato and of course i told you guys we just introduced the low strings but now once we get into the theme i also introduce uh some higher strings playing the ostinato and so they're playing with the low string and then i also add a viola just for a little more definition uh, we already have the synth. And then I also add some woodwinds. So um, I add clarinet, oboe, uh, bass clarinet, and bassoon, all on the ostinato. I really want to make sure I have enough support um, to really help carry that ostinato through the queue. We got all these massive drums and we got these French horns and trumpets. So you see how I had to really layer, layer, layer just to make sure that I have enough presence with the ostinato. But these are the woodwinds. Yeah, and you know, um, you hear them by themselves and you're like, eh, you know, they, they're, they're kind of light. But when you hear kind of everything together um, playing the ostinato, it, it really does. And then again, kind of supporting the rhythm, the finger cymbals. So there you have um, the the ostinato gets a lot you know bigger as I said and stronger and then the other thing that we add 
as um, we get into this section is I add some brass stabs. Again, just we're just trying to make sure that we're kind of pushing uh, this, this, this cue uh, forward. So I do some, some trumpet shorts, uh, trombone shorts, and then monster, monster little brass. And they're, uh, they're playing this. And you see, I, I only have the low brass going ba 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 ba, cause I, 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 don't, I just wanted the top brass ba ba ba, mm, ba ba ba. I, I didn't want that rhythm right there played all the way through. And when you hear it in the context of everything, you don't really hear that monster low brass kind. Of, it doesn't sound like it's like sticking out, um, the way it may sound, um, you know, when they're isolated like that. And then I have a timpani kind of supporting with that. See? So again, and the timpani is ba 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 ba. So the monster low brass pretty much supporting what the timpani is, but the trombones and the trumpets, um, of course, again, I just have them, um, you know, with the ba ba ba, right? <clears throat> and what we're using, uh, just quickly, for our trumpets, um, is we are using a center brass. Uh, so there we go. So uh, a solo trumpet there, and then the uh, trombones. Basically, uh, you know, with the, using a solo articulation, and I, I think I have three trumpet parts, so it's like three trumpets and then a solo articulation with the trombones, and I'm playing one, two, three, four parts, so it's like having four um, trombones um, as well. And I think it's three parts, yeah, and three parts on the trumpet. So, yeah, so three trumpets, four trombones, and then, of course, that monster um, low brass. Um, and then, so let's talk... Well, let me show you the, the bottom end a little bit. So what we're doing there is I have the legendary low strings, which you know I love. So really gritty, really digging into the strings, which I wanted. So it's, I believe I'm using spiccato articulation. Yeah, to show the spiccato articulation and the legendary low strings. And see, so we're, we're kind of, you know, riding um, our faders here just to make it, you know, kind of live a little bit. But I just love this, this, oh my gosh, this, this Abbey Road one legendary low strings. If you don't have it, get it. I, I think it sounds amazing. And then I just have that couple with um, my, my dark bass. So just kind of fill out that low end and if we put them together. Right, and then of course with the timpani and then the low um, thing, but the only thing that's riding across that, that is just that, the bass and the legendary low strings bass is about Bum, bum. So that gives us some, uh, even an additional pulse. So, bah, 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 so it just gives us a nice kind of gallop, um, if you will. So um, now let's kind of talk about the drums. So let's. Uh, I guess the first thing I do, I'm going to play the drums just kind of isolated. So you have. So um, just a, a bunch of kind of different layers. So I'll just try to move through um, super quickly here. Um, so one, just for a little low end punch, we got Ferrum. Uh, we have um, <clears throat> some low toms. Right. 
And let's just try to add on then um, uh, taikos and Chinese drums. Add it on. So you hear the, the little variation in the rhythm. Right, so let me play that by itself. You know, so just a little um, added uh, variation there. Um, and then we do our snares. So we have, uh, and I have two snares. I got the military snare and then a regular um, snare. Right? Um, and then a very, very important part of making the drum sound full, believe it or not, is the shakers. It helps us with our definition, right? Um, and it just really kind of help, helps the drums kind of cut. So we put everything back in. So see how that top end really just helps define everything. And then I just want to show you how we get bigger on the last section of it. Then. <laughs> okay, so what we're doing in this last section just to beef up the drums is is I add um, some toms, it says damage five, and, and I'm using, um, <clears throat> I think I'm using tom barrage, or what uh, or I call it Jeff's toms, because I, I don't know what I did, but just some, some toms there, but I, I just, whatever it was, I saved it um, as a setting. Um, but anyway, so it's just some toms, and they sound like, um, So when you get those in and then you see we layered another layer uh, of drums here as well. Um, so we add that in. Right, and then we also added another layer which is really super aggressive i'll let you hear it by itself whoops wrong one it's this one sorry about that so you hear that so <laughs> i mean just really really aggressive and that and that's another a ferrum uh that we added there and so that just gives us, so if we played like just that second half of the cue, listen to how epic and how big it gets going um, into our edit point uh, before we come back with the theme. <laughs> That's the way that symbol is supposed to sound, like the, the way it sounded getting us into uh, the uh, key chain. So <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what the heck is going on uh, with those symbols, but it's all good. Okay, so now when we um, getting get into our final theme, we now have like all of the horns playing, right? So we got 17 uh horns uh if you we got that legato we got the uh the four from bbc and the 12 with the 12 horns i did a counter melody um against the horn so we got the melody going and we got the counter but since we did a counter melody with the 12 horns um what we did is we added some support uh for from the trumpets with the melody and of course we still have the flute so now, so in terms of the main melody, this is the main melody.
you know, a little harmony, um, you know, added in their spots. So that's everybody now that's playing the melody. So since we lost 12 horns, we added uh, some trumpets. And then the 12 horns, now this is the counter. And then if we hear um, those together, then we have this. Right, and then of course we still have our um, stabs going on, right? Right. And then now the only other thing that we add to really kind of um, bring it home even more is I added a um, tuba and Pandora uh, long tones um, to really kind of drive home the grittiness and the epicness. So we got... And it's just really, you know, trying to drive home what, like I said, it was having the epic, you know, giving it, making it really epic. Now, our dark bass and our legendary lows are still, still pushing it along, though. Very important to keep that pacing, though. And one thing I did forget, um, and I'm gonna go back and play with everything. I, I forgot that I did add some high strings um, to the melody as well. So again, everything with the melody um, and the high strings. So you hear those high strings really help add. And without the low brass. Okay, and so, and what I use on the strings, I just use a marcato um, articulation just to really get just a little more um, definition uh, going on with there. And then the... Uh, only other thing is the ostinato um, continues, um, you know, which is pretty important. Um, you know, and we have like some trailer hits. So we just add these trailer hits to really um, give us a little more drive. And then now I'll play like all the drums in this final section to hear, you'll hear how, how much bigger the drums got. So now the drums are, they're just totally unleashed. So what we did here, and let's change that over, is we added another snare layer, because you remember we had the military, and actually we added two more um, snare layers because we've added now the, um, and let's change that there as well. So we've added the popcorn snare and we've added the concert snare. We already had the military snare um, and the damage snare. So we've now, if we play those snare um, layers, so you got a concert snare, you got a military snare, you got a um, popcorn snare, and again, this damage snare. So all of our snares. And one thing that um, I try to do is get snares, obviously, with different tones. The popcorn snare is really high, military, you know, is deeper, so on and so forth, just to get um, different snare tones uh, happening in it. And then you see the other thing, that <clears throat> I added, it, it kind of, you know, will go unnoticed, but you definitely feel it, is I add a tambourine. Mm -hmm. 
but it, it definitely uh, matters. I mean, you, you feel um, the difference, right? And then outside of that, we just add bigger layers. So we had introduced our times here, and of course now, so our times are in, you know, full blown. Uh, we had introduced those big hits. Well, now those big hits are in, um, you know, throughout this entire section. So one thing I, I, I do want to show you is let's play like the drums. So you say like, you say, oh my gosh, like they're hitting like crazy. But one other thing I want to show you, if we bypass like our, our mastering on it. So you see they're hitting. So they're hitting pretty much at minus six. You know, you, you get uh, pushed just a little over, of course, when those trailer hits hit, um, do hit. But for the drums, for the most part, all that aggressiveness, all that power, you know, and, and they're hitting at minus six. So, you know, it, it may seem, um, you know, once you got your mastering and of course, and everything is, is peak, um, you know, that is uh, hitting a lot harder. So you don't have to like, basically what I'm saying is you don't have to have your master bus or your mix bus maxed out, um, you know, in order to get that like epic sound. So if I, again, if I bypass like my mastering with everything, So for the most part, I mean, like I say, you know, besides those trailer hits that, that we do get dialed in, we are hitting at like minus six for for our track, which gives us a, a lot of room in terms, um, you know, of our mastering, right? So that, that's just an aside, just, just something um, that I wanted to add in there. Okay, so then um, pretty much all we do then it's kind of get out of the queue. So if I if I take us here and and get us out of the queue. And pretty much what we have happening there, especially we take it from the uh, what we hit on the A chord and then the B chord. So um, we have these string uh, run ups um, that we're doing, and this is kind of helping us with building the uh, tension. So we have this. <laughs> Nothing but just walking up, um, walking up the scale, and I do have the Poldowski and the woodwinds as well. So we, we have all the and and I did add in that final section. I added a um, piccolo to the ostinato as well. But in that final run up, we have. And of course, the bass clarinet shorts aren't playing that either. So you heard the bassoon and the bass clarinet are, are now they're kind of supporting um, the bottom end. And let's get all these strings out. So, yeah. So just um, kind of adding a little uh, low end support, right? And then of course the horns are and the uh, nope and we took the flute out so the horns now are whoa that's our trumpets here's our horns okay Our trumpets or our brass that are kind of carrying the staffs. So you see how I really opened them up, though. I mean, now every, everything is really open and brassy. Um, just to kind of make that that final uh, statement.
right? And then if we just add our low brass, um, our tuba and Pandora. <laughs> Right, and then uh, the timpani. Um, and, and there you have it. So in this case, we have that, you know, that, that big tootie. And then is the um, the tootie. And then what I do is I put a sting on it um, as opposed to a button. Now the way I define the difference between a sting and a button is a button would just be ba and off, right? But a sting is like you know. Ba da, you know, um, pop, 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 pop. In this case, or you know, like say ESPN, ba da da, ba do da, or beep, 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 da. It's a sting. It's kind of the way I see it. It could be totally wrong, but that's the way I kind of look at, um, you know, kind of defining a sting and a button. So anyway. <laughs> so there you have it. It's victorious. I uh, hope it was helpful. Uh, you know, the breakdown in terms of, you know, my process for creating something really epic and how you can go about um, really creating some epic drums um, as well. So as always, man, I, I just hope it was helpful uh, to you. And if so, please like, please subscribe. As you know, it definitely does help my channel um, and it helps. I think my, my videos reach uh, more people um, as well because the ag algorithm will pick up the fact that you liked it or, or you know if you have something you got a question please hit me up um, as well and if you have not subscribed please subscribe so you can get more content like this in the future all right so thanks so much for watching and until next time peace and god bless